and Salem family. Here we are with another day, another day that we can serve God, another day where he has granted us his grace and his mercy. Aren't we grateful that every day God gives us new mercies? We are here in this season of a pandemic where sometimes we're feeling like we are not in control. Sometimes we're feeling like we're trapped. We don't want to be at the house anymore. We want to be able to go out and do what we used to do. But God, Know and understand that God is still in control and God will make a way when we sometimes feel that there is no way. Good morning, Salem. I will be reading to you 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 10 through 12. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonderful deeds, which he has done, his marvel and the judgment from his mouth. Salem is prayer time. All eyes are closed, all heads are bowed, and all hearts are open. We come this morning to say thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Father, you watched over us last night as we slumbered and as we slept. We thank you for that. Lord, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, and we will hold on to that. Lord, we just thank you for being our God. Father, we come this morning praying for this church called Salem. We pray for our church leaders. We pray for Senior Pastor Joseph L. Williams, and we pray for Pastor Emeritus Jasper W. Williams, Jr. Lord, we thank you for them. We pray they will continue to anoint us with their blessings, and we pray that we will continue to accept it. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you do. We pray for all the ministries of this church. Father, we're praying for our sick and our shut-in. We're praying for our bereaved. Lord, we know it's tough right now, but you told us the battle is yours. And Lord, we thank you for that. Father, we come this morning praying for our children. As they go back to school, please keep them safe. And Father, we know our children are our future. Lord, you told us to pray for our leaders. We're praying for our government today. We pray there will be a government for all the people. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you do for us. Father, we pray you will continue to lead us and guide us and show us the way. Lord, we thank you for everything that you do. Father, we pray we will continue to walk like Christians. We continue to talk like Christians. We pray we don't say things we shouldn't say. We pray we don't do things we shouldn't do. And Father, you told us to love our neighbors. Father, we thank you for everything you do for us. And we will continue to follow you and help and bless. And we pray you will continue to keep an eye on us, Lord. Father, we, you said we should always praise you. And we will do that, Lord. I don't want rocks crying out for me. Lord, we thank you for everything you do. Please continue to help us, bless us, and watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right after a while, after a while. Over yonder, beyond the sky, there is everlasting life. All right, all right, it'll be all right. 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 After a while, after a while, over yonder, beyond the sky, there is everlasting life. All right, all right, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. No more sickness and no more pain. No more dying and no more rain. All right, all right. It'll be 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 all right. No more Monday, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, no more Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day will be like Sunday. 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 After a while, after a while. Good morning. My name is Joyce Carroll, and I'm a God First Doorkeeper at the Stonecrest Campus. It's so wonderful to have you worship with us today. Please sit wherever you like, get comfortable, but save enough room to shout, and enjoy the worship experience. Please have a blessed week. Shalom. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Good morning, shalom, and welcome. I am Elder George Dadell from, Stone, from the Stonecrest Campus. We invite you, our virtual audience, to share, to like, to comment, and to engage during the service. And I invite others to join our virtual worship experience. Our scripture for the day is coming from Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. He give power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increase strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with humble hearts, but we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come today open as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. We come to receive the word this morning that's going to be preached or taught by our pastors, Brother Jasper Williams, Jr., or our pastor, Joseph L. Williams. We come expecting this morning to be filled. We look to the hills from which cometh all our help. We know our help doesn't come from the hills, but it come from the one that made the hills. For the ones that's listening in radio land, we hope that you enjoy these services. We hope that your ears will be pricked and your heart will be open after these services that you will find in your heart a word that's been spoken and you can't hold out any longer to come and join in with the Salem band. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank God for these words. Amen. Now we'll have a word of welcome from our corner new ministries. Salam and welcome to Salem, the place of peace. On behalf of our pastors, Dr. Joseph L. William and Reverend Jasper William Jr. and the Salem family, we consider it an honor and a blessing to have you virtually worship with us today. In keeping with our 2021 church theme of Loose, we are currently focused on the character flaws of stubbornness. Stubbornness caused a person to have the tendency to resist any form of change. We can overcome stubbornness by being obedient to God's command and for God's will for our lives. In a season dedicated to the transformation and the renewal of our spirit, soul, and body, when you surrender and trust in the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Salam. Good to see ya.
everyone, you're watching WSBC Salem News, your source for news and information in and around Salem Bible Church. I'm Shata Spikes and here's a look at your church news. Growth groups have resumed this week. You still have time to join a growth group today by going to our website, SalemBibleChurch.org. Click the loose banner and click to register for a growth group. Wednesday, June 30th, Noonday Bible Study. Our topic is Can't Get It Right. Be sure to join us on Facebook. That's at Salem Bible Ministries. As we continue in our church theme of Loosed, we're gearing up for our next character flaw, victim mentality. Join us on Wednesday, July 14th at 12 noon. Our guest speaker will be coach, speaker, and trainer Bridget Simmons. Salem Bible Church is seeking a full-time maintenance supervisor. Please send your resume, email address, name, and cell phone number to hr at salembiblechurch.org. The deadline to submit your information is Sunday, July 11th. Salem Bible Church is seeking a part-time evening and weekend maintenance person for our Atlanta campus. Interested persons, please contact Reverend Montgomery at the church office. That's 404-792-0303. Please make sure you stay tuned to Salem News, your email, our website, and social media as we prepare to come back into our sanctuary in August. Now we know that COVID has changed the way we do everything. So it's important to note that our church office hours are Tuesdays and Fridays from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. All emergency pastoral care situations should be reported by calling our after hours line. That's 404-304-3218. Please make note that you can also join us for virtual Sunday school each Sunday at 9.45 a.m. Just visit our website, SalemBibleChurch.org, click Resources, click Forms, and click Inquiry Forms. At Salem Bible Church, we have multiple ways to give. You can give by mailing in your tithe and offering to Salem Bible Church, 2283 Baker Road, Northwest Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. You can also give by visiting our church website, that's SalemBibleChurch.org. Click on the online giving link, fill in the necessary information, and please remember to wait for your confirmation number. You can use our Givelify app. Download the app, search for Salem Bible Church, and give. You can also text to give. Text your amount to 404-495-5081. Well, I'm Shata Spikes, and this has been your edition of Salem News. i see you again on next week. Shalom. Bye-bye. Good morning and welcome to Salem Bible Church, the place of peace. I am Pastor Latasha Davis, the lead pastor of ministries. Listen, I am excited that you are here worshiping with us today in the place of peace. So go on and share this page, like it, let everyone know that you are worshiping here today with us. Our word will be given to us today by senior pastor, Dr. Joseph L. Williams. But before he comes, you know the drill, I already have announcements for you. So as we go back into in-person worship and prepare for re-entry, we would love for all the men of Salem Bible Church to join us for a beautification day. Join us at the Atlanta campus Saturday, July 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in our Stonecrest campus. That will be Saturday, July 17th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So men, go on and roll up your sleeves and help us transform the church grounds as we prepare for re-entry. You can do so by going to SalemBibleChurch.org, click on the beautification banner and sign up and we'll see you on either one of those Saturdays. As we continue to prepare for in-person worship, we would love to hear from you about what you miss about being here in service. So you can send your one minute video in landscape to social media at Salem Bible Church. Again, we want to hear from you. We would love to feature you in the Monday moment segment on our Facebook page. We want to know what do you miss about being here at in-person worship? Again, send your videos, one minute video in landscape to social media at SalemBibleChurch.org. Well, now it's time for the word from our very own Senior Pastor, Dr. Joseph L. Williams. Good morning and welcome to Salem Bible Church, the place of peace. 
I'm Dr. Joseph L. Williams, Senior Pastor of Salem Bible Church, Atlanta and Stonecrest. And we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as well as in the spirit of what we say here at Salem Bible Church, the place of peace, Shalom. Shalom is a greeting of peace where we are bidding you peace, not only you, but upon you, your home, your family, and all things that concerns you. We're so happy on today that you've taken the time to worship with us. These last 15 plus months have been tedious, but God has proven himself over and over again and again to be faithful and to be true. God's hand is still upon you and I, and for that we give him all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. In just a few more weeks, we'll be together in person on the first Sunday in August. We are very uh, anticipating not only being in the church and being in the physical building, but seeing God's people for the first time in 15 to 16 plus months. We can't wait and we are anxiously anticipating August 1st. There are gonna be a lot of more, a lot of great things that are gonna to come to fruition a lot of things that are gonna be and make our worship experience in church not the same pre-COVID, but different, better, and improved post-COVID. Because if we re-enter the church as we exited the church, how can we say that we've grown collectively? Just stay tuned because each and every week as we crescendo up to the first Sunday in August, you'll hear more about what we've done, our new plans for and in the future for you to be a part of. On yesterday, we had a great meeting on both campuses, Atlanta and Stonecrest with all of our leaders. We've been having an in-person meeting on yesterday. Two weeks ago, we met virtually. We are planning to receive each person on the first Sunday in August. We're planning procedures, protocols, how we are to make our worship experience not only effective and impactful, but safe for the community and all who are on both campuses. So we thank God for our leaders and give them a big shout out. I'm excited about today's message because whenever we can take the word of God and use it in a way to where we can apply it to our lives, it always me makes for a rhema word, which means that I'm receiving something that is tailored for me. Sometimes that tailored word is something that I want to hear. Sometimes that tailored word is something that I need to hear. And sometimes that tailored word is both and encompasses both. So come with me as we journey to the pulpit. I'm coming from Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'll be dealing uh, by and large with that entire passage of scripture. If you hold your text there at Deuteronomy chapter 28, as we matriculate through the text and through the sermon and its movements, we'll visit that particular text as we can learn together what the Lord has to say to us. Talking from the, this morning from the subject, if. Again, if. I was at my home several months ago, and as I noticed that as the weather began to warm up, that more critters became present in our home, more spiders, more ants, more what we call water bugs, which is just a better way of saying roach. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I got to the point to where we needed help. We needed someone who could help keep the pest at bay. You know, the goal and objective of any homeowner is to live separate from uh, roaches, from ants, from spiders. I'm certain that you all are in agreement with that. Whether you use a professional company or whether you are your own exterminator, no human being that I know of at least desires to live with pest. The gentleman came out to our home. He surveyed the house. He walked along the perimeter on the outside of the home. And he walked on the inside of the home. And as he got through going on the outside of the home and on the inside of the home, he brought me into the foyer of the particular house. And he said to me, he says, uh, Mr. Williams, he says, I've surveyed your house inside and on the outside and I think I know what we can do. He says, we've got a plan, we've got protocols, we've got procedures, we can do this, we can treat that. I'm going to bait this, I'm going to bait that. And all of what he was saying was, was very exciting to me because it sounded to me that our pest problem was coming to an end. 
And as he finished going over uh, the inside of the home and the outside of the home, he said to me, Mr. Williams, if you make this deposit and if you make this payment and if we can put you on a billing schedule each and every month, he says there's a 98 percent chance that you will never see any more spiders in your home, no more ants in your home, no more rodents, no more roaches. And I thought to myself, 98 percent. And I was reminded in that moment how I disdain partial guarantees. You know, if someone is going to do something, if I'm going to follow what you tell me to do, and if I pay what you tell me to pay, and if I fulfill my end of the requirements, why am I dealing with partial guarantee? 98% uh, chance, because there's always that 2% chance that I'll see another ant, that I'll see another rodent, that I'll see another roach, that I'll see another water bug. I began to reflect to myself at that moment how there are so many things in life that are contingent on something not fully manifesting. Things that you would think would be a guarantee if you do the right things, if you do this, if you do that, but when you study them, you realize it's a partial guarantee. Something like, if I get married, there's a chance, a large chance, that it'll end in divorce, partial guarantee. Uh, if I invest in the stock market, that there's a chance that I could lose everything that I've ever invested in, no matter how long I've been investing in my retirement and for my future. Or if I do all the right things, if I work out, if I eat right, if I, if I keep a healthy weight, that there's no guarantee that I'm going to live three score and ten, that I'm going to live 70, 80, 90 years. You know, those partial guarantees are something else. And when you think about life, it's full of partial guarantees. You know, if you treat people right, there's no guarantee that they're going to do the same for you. If I respect you, there's no guarantee that you are going to respect me. If I follow all of the laws of the streets, of the highway, of the Georgia State Patrol, of the Georgia Department of Transportation. There is no guarantee that I'm going to be treated fairly by law enforcement. We see this each and every Sunday. But ladies and gentlemen, when I was thinking of these different scenarios of partial guarantees of my pest control man saying that if I pay this, there's a 98% chance that I don't see pest or rodents that tells me there's a 2% chance that I will see them. Or, or if I make proper investments, that if I do all the right things at the right time, that I just may lose everything. And, and if I follow good health procedures for my life and eat the right things and work out and keep a healthy body mass index, that, that I still may not live a full life. And if I respect you, that you may not respect me. Or if I do the right thing, that I may not have the right thing done to me. I began to think to myself, what are it's not some partial guarantees, but full guarantees? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you want a full guarantee, you can't deal with anything that is created or thought up by a human being. You got to go to God's word. And it's only in the word of God that if we do what we're supposed to do, that if I assume the posture of a child of God, as the word of God tells me, that if I follow the commandments and if I abide by the word of God, that the word of God is the only thing in life that if I do what God tells me to do, that there's no partial guarantees, but full guarantees. So today I want to talk from the subject again, if, and I want to show you my principal text on today. The word of God in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse one says, and it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thy God. That means that if I obey God 
And to obey God means to obey God's word. The word says that if I hearken, you see, diligently, that means day in and day out, not just me going to church on Sunday, but if I'm living the life that God has taught me, if I hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, we see the ifs, if I hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe all of his commandments. So if I listen and obey God's word, and if I observe the commandments of God, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations. And within this text, we'll see all of these contingents of if I follow the word, and if I listen to the word of God, and if I diligently hearken my ear to the word of God, how God is going to bless. Now, a few things I want to bring out in the text on this morning. My first point that I want to show you on today is if we follow the word of God, that God is going to initiate, watch this, elevation and separation. Again, if I hearken to the voice of God, if I obey the word of God, if I follow the commandments of God, the first thing the word of God tells me God is going to do for you, for me and for we who are in obedience to his word, not a partial guarantee, but a full guarantee. God says, if you follow my word. If you hearken to what I'm telling you, if you follow my commandments, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to be a participant and watch this elevation and separation. Now, a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. A lot of folk like the idea of favor, being blessed, having grace over your life. But a lot of folk who have the favor of God on your life understand that with that elevation, right, comes hate, comes dislike, comes people talking about me, comes people running their mouth comes people not liking me and I've never done anything to them. The first thing that you have to understand, I'm going to show you in the text that with favor, elevation comes what? Separation. My elevation in life, when God elevates me from where I was to where I am through my obedience to him. And many of you who are tithers, many of you who have hearkened your, your hearts to the Lord, many of you who live in, who lived a life of God and the word of God, you see how God has blessed you in your homes, financially, uh, at work, in your social status. You see the elevation in your life, but you also not only see the elevation, but you feel the hate. And the reason why is because whenever someone was looking at you, but now they have to look up to you, that will always be a manifestation of hate of jealousy and of envy, which means whenever we are participatory at following the word of God, that elevation of God's grace and favor in my life will also manifest separation. Now, let me show you the word of God. I've read it to you, but I want to uh, take some time and slow it up. It says, and it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently, you see, unto the word of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all of his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will, here is where elevation and separation comes from, watch this, that the Lord thy God will, watch this, set thee on high above all nations of the earth. God is saying in his word, you Israel, you Zion, who are the body of believers, you the body of Christ, if you Hearken your heart to my word. If you follow my instructions, if you allow my word to abide in you, if you listen to the tenets of what I am teaching you, the word of God says that God is going to watch this. Set thee on high above all nations. That means that not only am I going to be at the eyesight of other nations, but I'm going to be above other nations, which means other people are not looking at me, but looking up to me. With elevation comes separation. You see. 
It's kind of like Mount Everest is found in Nepal, the highest peak in the world above ground level. Every mountain, I don't care how high it is, has to look up to it. It's the highest peak on earth. This is what happens in life when the favor of God is on you, when the grace of God is on your life. Folk are looking up to you, you see. But the price you pay with elevation, that's when God sets me up is what separation, that means I don't have as many friends when I'm elevated as I used to when I was at eyesight with everybody else. Y'all don't want to talk to me. There's a byproduct that sometimes there's a dark side to having favor. I can't be and have a mindset of a pigeon but like an eagle because pigeons stay in flocks. But eagles soar higher but by themselves with elevation, you see, comes separation. A lot of y'all are praying for the favor of God on your life, but you're not ready to be socially rejected. You see, with elevation comes separation. With elevation comes people not liking you and you've done nothing to them. With elevation will come people conspiring behind your back. With elevation comes people never accepting you for who you are because in times, it's very difficult for people to fully respect those and give props to those that they used to look at. See, when you were growing up, you were just a regular Joe. You were just a regular Mary. But see, you're not the same old person you used to be. God has his hands on you, you know. God is elevating you. You're no longer the baby girl. You're no longer the baby boy, but, but you got your, your act together now. And now those same people who used to be maybe your older siblings or your older cousins or your older neighborhood friends are hating on you. Why? Because with elevation comes separation. See, life, ladies and gentlemen, and following the word of God and having the grace of God on your life is like living or flying on a plane. There are two classes. You got first class and you got coach. And you see, when you're in first class, watch this, you get perks you don't get in coach. You got your own bathroom. You got your own stewardess that's coming to not only give you drinks on a cart, but lay out a white cloth on top of your, your table to bring you some champagne or whatever beverage of choice that you want before takeoff. You don't get the little box snacks and peanuts and crackers, but you get a meal that's warm and hot. You get perks in first class. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That you don't get while you are in coach. Well, this text is basically bifurcating the treatment in life if we follow the word of God. That if I abide in the Lord, that if I follow his commandments, that if I hearken diligently to the word of God, that the Lord is going to bless me. And the first thing that he promises is I'll elevate you high above all nations. With elevation comes separation. But I want to I want to drill down into the actual promises of God. You see. Those of you watching saying, well, what, 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 what? Why should I live right? Why should I have morals? Why, why should I be Christ centered? Why should I be a Bible believing, practicing Christian? See, the reason why people are getting away from the church and getting away from the word of God is people don't understand the perks you get. You don't want to talk to me. When you hearken to the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, when you allow the word of God to abide in you, allow me to show you that with this elevation, what comes along with that? The Lord says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse three through five. The first thing the Lord says is blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. So the first thing that you have to understand is if I diligently follow the word of God, if I allow his commandments and I abide with him, if I allow the word of God to abide in me, not only is God going to elevate me above all nations, but God promises, watch this, that I'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You see, I like that because what this text tells me is if I do what I'm supposed to do as a believer, that the favor of God is not going to be uh, fixed to a location. You see, uh, a lot of you think that what's sustaining you is the job you have or or the city that you're living in or or where you are logistically. No, no, no. God says 
if you abide, if you allow my word to abide in you, if you diligently hearken your heart to my word, he says, no matter where you are, <laughs> I'm going to bless you in the city, you see, and in the fields. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter how many letters you got behind your name. It doesn't matter what struggles you have in and over your life. I'm not going to allow my favor to be fixed in a geographical location. Wherever you go, I go. Like the song, when you move, I move, you see. Wherever I am, God's grace is with me. God's favor is on my life. You see, that's why you can't trip when folk leave you. That's why you can't get mad when the company downsizes. It doesn't matter if the company is working. It doesn't matter if, I'm, if, if my status says M or S. God says that if I diligently follow his word and his commandments, that he's going to bless me in the city. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And in the fields, wherever I go, I'm, I'm going to be blessed. But he also says, verse 4, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, Lord have mercy, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Every time I see, see dad, he tells me how much that I remind him of my grandfather. And dad oftentimes tells me how, how granddad's spirit is on me. Dad tells me how I'm, how, I'm, how I'm more like my grandfather than him sometimes. My, my old man tells me this. And he tells me how, how, how granddad's spirit is on me. And see, if you know anything about my grandfather, dad used to always tell me, because gr when granddad passed away, I was two years of age, so I didn't remember him. But dad told me that granddad was always a praying man. Dad used to say that in the middle of the night sometimes he would hear his father wailing, praying God over, over his family and over his children and over his children's children. Well, you see, in that verse 4, it says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Lord have mercy. What does that mean? The fruit of my body is what? My offspring. The Lord... The first commandment in Genesis was what? Be fruitful and multiply. And there's some of y'all watching me. You ain't all that. You've made mistakes. You've tripped up in life. But you're blessed because you know you had a, a praying mother. You had a praying father. You had, you had a, a praying grandmother. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's not because you're all that, but, but, but through the bloodline, God is still blessing the fruit of your grandfather's offspring, the fruit of his body, the fruit of your grandmother's body, the fruit of your mother's body, the fruit of your father's body. God says, if you follow my commandments, thank you, Lord. If you heed my words diligently, if you allow my word to abide in you, I'm going to bless you in the city, in the field. I'm going to bless, watch this, the fruit of thy body. The fruit of thy ground, that means my work will be blessed. The fruit of thy cattle, that's my money. The increase of thine kind, my kinfolk. And the flocks of thy sheep. In verse 5 he says, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Lord have mercy. In every facet of existence, God is going to bless if we follow his word. God's going to bless the fruit of my body if I allow his word to abide in me. God is going to bless me and bless us in the city and in the field. And I speak that over your life right now. And those of you who've been diligently following the word of God, obeying his word, following everything that you know to be true, working on yourself daily. God told me to tell you that a blessing is on the way. That every facet of your existence, God is going to bless. So if we follow the words of the Lord, if we're diligent to be in alignment with his commandments, that the first thing God says that we're going to manifest is he says he's going to elevate us above all nations. And with that elevation comes separation. But not only that, if we do those things, we'll see elevation and separation. But also if I diligent, di diligently follow the word of the Lord and if I allow the word of God to abide in me and if I follow the commandments of God, not only am I going to see uh, elevation and separation, but I'm going to see, watch this, protection and rejection. Lord have mercy. Protection 
and rejection. Before I explain this, let me tell you how how people are. Right now, we got two countries, two world dominant powers, America and China. They're enemies. And both of them are always trying to get up on the other, trying to find out what the other is doing, trying to undercut the other. This is what happens when you're not dwelling in a spiritual frame of mind. You get caught up on getting back at people, spying at people, going through folks' phones, needing information to know what's coming. See, but see, when, when you're in alignment with God, stay with me. When you're digi- diligently following the word of God, the commandments of God, when you are allowing the word of God to abide in you, I don't have to get caught up on what my enemies are doing behind my back. I don't have to uh, uh, get the tip of who's talking about me. I don't have to participate in uh, relational espionage because whenever something's done in the dark, the Lord is going to reveal what I need to know when I need to know it. Now, now this, this point says that, that if I am diligent in following the word of God and his commandments and his word, that God is going to usher protection and rejection. Protection of who? You, the believer. Me, the believer. We, the believers. Rejection of who? Your enemies. <laughs> now, if God says that I'm going to protect you, right, and reject your enemies, you know what that means? I don't have to worry about what anybody is doing behind my back. I don't have to worry about schemes and strategies. When my focus is on living right, following the word of God, treating people right, giving God my tithe and my offering, giving God my life as a vessel, I don't have to worry about what people think about me, what people are conspiring against me. Why? Because the word of the Lord promises that I'm going to protect you and reject your enemies. Let me show you the word of God. Because it's something very, very exciting about this text, because I want you to see this. Look on your screen, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 7. It says, the Lord shall cause. We're still in the list of benefits if I am in alignment. It says, the Lord shall cause thine enemies, watch this, that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. That's self-explanatory. Watch this. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Uh. Now, the first part of the text is self-explanatory. If the Lord... Uh, but the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thee, thy face. That means God is going to chop every enemy down before me, smitten, to be killed, to be dispatched. And he says it's going to happen in front of your face. What did David say? He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Kind of the same thing. God is going to set your table up to where your enemies see food, meaning success. <laughs> Those who don't like you, the worst payback is when they see you winning. You see, he prepares a table before me in the presence of his enemies. You see, to where they see it. But the Lord here says, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. You'll see it. Those that are coming up against you. The text is saying you'll see their fall. You'll see their downfall. You'll see their trip ups. You'll see their slip ups. You'll see their stumbles. But when we keep on reading This is what I want to focus in on. It says, they shall come out against thee. Who's they? Your enemies. One way. But they're going to flee seven ways. What's he saying? What he's saying is, if I'm in alignment with the word of God, if I am diligently following his word, if I am following the commandments of God, my enemies are going to come at me, what, one way. That means what my enemies come at me, they got a strategy. They have something they're looking to accomplish. They're trying to take me out. They're trying to knock me off. They're trying to conspire behind me. They're unified, whether it's one person, three people, or ten people. Everybody in your job, everybody that's, that's in your neighborhood, whatever it is, it's, it's organized. But, but, but it's kind of like Mike Tyson said that, that everybody got a plan until they get hit in the face. 
See, what, what, what the text is saying is my enemies are going to come at me organized. But when the Lord gets through with them, they're going to be, watch this, scattered seven ways. There's going to be what? Confusion <laughs> in my enemy. So they're going to start off looking unified, looking dignified, looking strategized. But, but when they mess with the wrong one, they're going to leave scrambling, confusion, because the Lord says, I'm going to protect you and reject your enemies. Let me see if I can make this plain and, 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 and present. Man on the left, Charlemagne the God, one of the three hosts of the Breakfast Club, one of the probably one of the most uh, uh, popular secular morning talk shows that impacts hip hop culture, arguably in the world. Man on the right. Kwame Brown. Kwame was a man who was drafted in the early 2000s thereabout, and he was the number one draft pick. He was the number one draft pick at the time, but he underachieved in terms of what his critics thought that he would or should do. But at the end of the day, the man made over $60 million and still played in excess of 12 years in the NBA. The man on the left was talking about the man on the right. The man on the left, Char Charlemagne the God, went on this long diatribe talking about how he knew Kwame and he was talking, telling business about Kwame's father and about Kwame's mother and about Kwame's brother and all of these things about his siblings being arrested and being in jail and accused of murder. But see, sometimes in life you fool with the wrong one. You see, the man on the left, Charlemagne the God, started the attack. He was strategic, thinking that his platform, thinking that his voice was going to crush the man on the right. But see, what happened is everything switched. You see, it switched because when, when man on the right, Kwame Brown, heard what man on the left, Charlemagne the God, said, he went back on the offensive. And he began to basically say that you're messing with the wrong one. And just as quickly as the man on the right attacked Kwame, now he's on the retreat, you see. Now he's sending public apologies. Now everybody on the internet is ganging up on man on the left. Now man on the left, his integrity has diminished. Now the man on the left rejects and, and, and probably hates the fact that he ever opened up his mouth about the man on the right. What's the point I'm trying to make you understand? Sometimes in life, the enemy is the man on the left. And sometimes your enemies are the man on the left. And sometimes your hater is like the man on the left. And you are the man or the woman on the right, the innocent one. The man or the woman on the right minding your own business. The man or the woman on the right leaving everybody alone. But it's going to come a time when the man on the left is going to mess with the man on the right. But don't worry about it because if you are being diligent, thank you, Holy Spirit, about following the word of God, about following the commandments of God, about allowing the word of God to, to abide on the inside of you. They may come at me one way, but they're leaving scattered. God's going to confuse my enemies. God is going to confound my enemies, and I don't have to worry about none of it. All I got to do is be diligent about following his word, his commandments, and being diligent on what the, the word of the Lord speaks to me. Now, when I was studying this text, something very amazing happens. Because when you go home and after this sermon ends, I want you to read the entire chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And what's amazing is God gives us the positive perks of if for 15 verses. From verse 1, where he says, I'll set thee high above all nations. To verse 15, he's given all of the benefits of if I'm diligent, if I follow the word of the Lord, if I do what I'm supposed to do. But what's amazing is I ask myself, well, what if not? What if we don't do it? What if we aren't diligent to the word of God? What if we don't listen to his voice? What if we don't follow the commandments of God? Well, what's amazing is the positive things only last for 15 verses. That's the if. <laughs> He'll bless me in my coming in and my going out in the city and in the field. He'll bless the fruit of my body, my basket, my store. All the blessings run for 15 verses. But if not, it goes 
from verse 16 to 68. So it's more negative that comes along with if we refuse to follow God's word than the blessings that come if we do. So point number one is that if I'm diligent to God's word, he's going to elevate us and separate us. If I'm diligent to God's word, He's going to protect us and reject us. But what if not? If not, God is going to watch this curse and rehearse. See, everybody knows what a curse is. Something bad manifests over my life. But a rehearse is when it happens, watch this, over and over again and again and again and again. And if you ever want to see what your life will look like if you don't heed to the voice of God, if you don't follow God's commandments. And if you aren't diligent to his word, read verses 16 through 68 of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and you'll see it's, a, it's, a, it's over and over again of God cursing and rehearsing. That means God is cursing us and rehearsing it, doing it what? More than once, over and over again and again and again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Just look at this. But it shall come to pass that if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, then, I, then, then all these, watch this, curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let me just read a few. 16, cursed thou shalt be in the city. Cursed thou shalt be in the field. 17, cursed shalt thy basket in thy store. 18, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou come in. Cursed shall be when thou go out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexations, and rebuke in all that thou set thine hand, that thine hand to do. So everything you do, I'm a curse until thou be what? Destroyed. And until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from, of the, from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. So for 15 verses, we see the good. God's going to bless my body. God's going to bless my house. God's going to bless my children. God's going to bless my family, my, my offspring, my, my coming in, my going out. Wherever I am, God is going to bless me in the city, in the field. God's going to protect me from my enemies. God's going to reject them. But if not, God is even more extensive from verses 15 to 68. Now, if I had to take verses 15 and 68 and try to truncate it and, and make it in a way that you can understand for the sake of time, there are three different ways that we'll be cursed and it'll be rehearsed. Number one, individually. That if I don't follow the word of God, if we don't follow the commandments of God, if we don't heed to the word of God, that the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to be cursed individually. You see? Everything he said he was going to do, he's going to not only not do it, but curse it. He said, curse shall be, verse 16, in the city and in the field. Wherever you go, you're going to be cursed. The city and the field are, are antithetical. What he's saying is wherever you go, it doesn't matter. You can't escape it. You ever met people in life that every time you see them, it's like they just bad luck? That's what the, that's what the text is saying. Wherever you go, you're going to be cursed. Doesn't matter what job you get, doesn't matter how much money you make, they're folk that make, that make hundreds of thousands of dollars. They always broke, always miserable, always sad. I know them. That's a curse over your life. And likewise, I know people who ain't got nothing and they're always happy. People who come from nothing and they're always smiling. People who are by themselves and got joy in their hearts. It's not about the city or the field. You see? Verse 17, curse shall be thy basket in thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Your children. Just like God is going to bless your children by what you do, God is going to curse the children by what we don't do. The fruit of thy hand, the increase of thine kind, the flocks of the sheep. Curse shall be 
Thou, when you come in, verse 19, when you go out. So the first thing that's going to happen is God says that if, if, if we don't hearken our hearts, if we don't abide in his commandments and his word, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm cursing you as an individual. But not only is God going to curse us, does the text say that the curse comes as an individual, but our health is going to be cursed. Look what he says. The Lord shall make, watch, watch this, the pestilence cleave unto thee. Let me read you what that is. Pestilence. Pestilence, a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating, especially the bubonic plague, or two, something that is destructive or pernicious. So a pestilence is a curse that the byproduct of the curse is going to make me and us sick. And all of y'all right now should be thinking, I'm reading your mind right now, because what you thinking about right now? COVID-19. A global pandemic that has shut the world down. We have been able to work. We just getting to the point. And now even when the world is reopening, they still have problems because there are more, more variants, more varieties of the virus that are more devastating, more contagious. That's a pestilence. And God says that I'm going to curse the land when the people don't obey me. You see it? Now, what you don't understand is everybody thinks that the only virus that has mattered is COVID-19. But do you know how many pestilence that we've been up against? <laughs> Look on your screen. Ninety nine and two thousand and two West Nile virus. Two thousand one anthrax. Two thousand three. This is the predecessor of COVID-19 SARS COVID. Two thousand six. It was a mumps outbreak. E. coli and salmonella poisoning through fresh spinach. One hundred and ninety nine reported cases, three deaths within 20 states. 2009, H1N1 virus, or the, or the swine flu. 2012, the whooping cough. 2012, MERS COVID. 2014, Ebola. 2016, Zika virus. And here we are, 2020, COVID-19. Virus after virus after virus. God said in his word, if you don't hearken your voice to my word. <laughs> I shall make the pestilence cleave. Is that not what it's doing? COVID-19 has grabbed this world and won't let it go. The, the, the text tells us this. Until we, he have what? Consumed thee off the land. Wherever you go to possess it. If we don't follow the word of God. The curse and rehearse will be me as an individual. The curse and rehearse will be our health. But also the curse and rehearse will be, watch this, our country. There's a time when we as America stood on God. There's a time when we as America went to church. We may not have been perfect, but we tried to live right. There's a time when we as Americans had God on public displays at our governmental buildings and offices. Seeing the baby Jesus around Christmas. Seeing the Ten Commandments at our government buildings and courthouses. Seeing the manifestation of God on television, praying in schools. But now all of those things have been removed to agendas that the cost will be our own soul. 
in our burning country, can't you see that everything negative that's happening in the downfall of America is because what God said, that when we don't hearken our hearts, when we don't follow his word, when we don't follow his commandments, that this is the repercussions of our actions? See, right now, America isn't the only country that's on the rise. Countries like Russia, countries like India that America is trying to keep divided, Africa that they're trying every day to keep divided through war, through artificial their manifestations to keep Africa divided because if Africa ever unites with its rich natural resources, they know it's a game, it's a game changer. But there's one country that is right on the heels of the United States of America that wants to be the number one power in the world called China, whose army is growing in power, whose military might is exponentially increasing. But God said in his word, if you don't follow me speaking to a country, my word, my commandments, when you don't allow me to be first, when you don't allow yourselves to be diligent about me. Look what the Lord says in verse 29. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Look how specific it is. From the end of the earth, the east has always been considered the end of the earth, the orient. As swift as the eagle flies, watch this, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. If you follow my word, if you're diligent, if my word abides in you, I'll bless you. I set thee high upon a, a nation above all nations. I'm going to elevate you. I'm going to separate, separate you. If you follow me, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to bless you in your coming in and your going out. Bless your house. Bless your children. I'll reject your enemies. But if not, I'll curse you. You'll be cursed as an individual. Your health will be cursed. Your country will be cursed. If you're watching this presentation and you know you haven't been in alignment with God, let me help you make the steps of salvation right now. Close your eyes wherever you are. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. I pray special for that man, that woman, that child that's watching this presentation. Lord, come into their hearts, save them, allow them to confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts in you, to follow your word, your commandments, to allow your word to abide in them. Give them salvation right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and every saint of God said amen. Now I want you to follow that prayer with reaching out to us. If you look on your screen, social media at SalemBibleChurch.org. There are people who are on standby. Give us your name. Give us your contact information. You may want us to call you. If you want us to call you, leave your number for us. If you want us to communicate with you via email, let us know. One of our team members, one of our on-staff ministers will be in response to you to walk you through the steps of salvation or to pray with you and for you during your time of need. But whoever and wherever you are, you remember let us align ourselves with the word of God, to be diligent, to follow the word of God, his commandments, to allow the word of God to abide in us. On this day, we want to remind you of our consistency and desire to bring the tithe into the storehouse. One of the commandments of God is to bring the tithe into the storehouse, to bring the offerings unto God. And when we do those things, God promises that he'll bless us. He said, when you bring the tithe into my, into my storehouse, that I'm going to bless you to you where you don't have room enough to receive it. That's, that's the key to open windows. 
is obedience. So let us be mindful and to bring into the storehouse virtually. If you look on your screen, there are multiple ways to give here at Salem Bible Church. The tithe and the offering. You can mail the tithe and offering in. You can text your gifts. You can use uh, the online giving support at SalemBibleChurch.org. You can download the Givelify app or you can walk in your gifts during business hours here during this time. But however you choose to give, let's be diligent. Let's be consistent. We love you, Salem. We got just about four more weeks and we'll look forward to worshiping in person, but also to all of you guys who are worshiping us from home or from different parts of the country or the world, you'll still be able to access our virtual streaming services. Until next time, be well, be blessed, we love you. And until next time, we bid you shalom. Peace. When arms raised and palms turn in, we thank you all for joining our services today, and we hope that you enjoyed them. We hope that you got something out of it that you can feast on and live on for this week. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his Father with great joy to the all-wise God, be it power, dominion, now, here forth, and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. I am loose, loose from infirmities and disabilities, loose from all that impels me. Nothing can hold me now, I'm standing on solid ground, the word of the Lord. I've got the victory over my Oh, the sun sets free, he is free indeed. My chains are broken, thank God. I am loose, loose, Oh, yes, I am, yes, I am. I am loose, loose, Oh, yes, I am, yes, I am. I am loose.